Hi, this is Steve. In this segment, we're going to look at the information mode. So the information mode will tell us all about the present state of the unit, what it's seeing in terms of incoming water temperature, outgoing water temperature, return air temperature, supply air temperature, outdoor temperature, and the condition of all the uh, relays and the damper positions. So let's just scroll through that uh, quickly. So again, if we go into information mode, remember we press the mode button once, that's information. We press enter on the right to enter into um, information mode. And then we have parameter number one. Parameter number one in information mode is the blower speed. Now the unit is off, of course. So the unit is saying the blower speed is 0%. If the blower was operating at 20% or 30%, you would see 20 here or 30 here. And this little icon represents percentage. So parameter number two. So let's just use the up button to go to parameter number two. Parameter number two is the pump speed. Um, on the iFlow, we have variable speed uh, pump control built into our unit. Um, this will tell us what the actual pump speed is based on the output that we're supplying to it as a percentage of total power. So when we're supplying 100% power to the pump, uh, that would be 100% capacity, of course. And then as we supply a lower percentage, uh, you would actually see a lower uh, pump speed, a lower flow rate through the unit. So this will display 20%, uh, 40%, 80%, depending on what we're supplying to the pump. Parameter number three is the water temperature delta T. So we're actually looking at the incoming water temperature versus the outgoing water temperature and measuring the difference. And that is parameter number three. Parameter number four is the difference on the air side. So we look at the return air sensor, we look at the supply air temperature sensor, we take the differential and we list it here. So this parameter would be um, would be um, uh, the difference in the air temperatures, return versus supply. So because this unit is off, it makes sense we're seeing zero here, zero differential, both sensors seeing the same number. And if we go down to zero three, same thing on the water side. Because the unit's not operating, this is just a demo unit in the office, um, we're seeing, again, the differential being zero, which is what we would expect given that it's not running. Both sensors should be seeing the same temperature. Parameter number five is the outdoor temperature sensor. Um, we have the outdoor temperature sensor wires into the board at this location, just to the right. Um, and we have actually got a potentiometer, uh, again, that will simulate the outdoor temperature. So we can actually adjust the outdoor temperature down or we can adjust it up as we need. Now, when, you, when you're in the field or have this installed, this actual, this actual sensor would be run outside so it would be actually seeing the outdoor temperature. Um, but I just wanted to say that's why it's not seeing the same temperature even though it's indoors because we have a um, a potentiometer on this that we're manipulating it for demonstration purposes only. Um, so this is the number five would be the outdoor temperature sensor. Parameter six is the entering water temperature. So we saw in parameter three we actually give you the delta T. So we actually calculate the delta T across the coil. In parameter six and seven we actually give you the values that we're seeing. So uh, parameter number six will tell you the incoming water temperature. Parameter number seven will tell you the outgoing water temperature. So again, because this unit is not on, it makes absolute sense that both six and seven, sorry, um, six and seven would give us the same temperature because they're seeing the same temperature. Um, parameter number eight is the same on the air side now. So parameter number four gave us the air temperature delta T. In parameter eight, we actually get the, return, the supply air temperature. Uh, and then parameter nine, we have the return air temperature. And again, because the unit's not operating, it makes sense that those sensors are very close together in terms of readings, which they are. Parameter number 10 is the AC evaporator temperature sensor. So on the unit, on the unit, when you open the box of the unit, um, laying on the top of the coil, you have this sensor. 
Um, it could be copper or it could be stainless steel, uh, but it'll be marked AC evaporator temperature sensor. This uh, installs in the top of your AC coil and it's measuring the temperature coming off the top of the coil um, for freeze protection. So parameter number 10 uh, will actually give you the value that it's seeing and not surprising it's seeing the same temperature as the other sensors were because it again is off and it's just sitting on top. The Parameter number 11 uh, gives us the DH evaporator temperature sensor um, or, or the, temp the sensor temperature. Um, this sensor is located um, or installed when we're using heat pumps uh, and we, we want to identify the state of the reversing valve. So when the heat pump goes into defrost mode, we want to know when it goes into defrost mode so that we can bring in some turn on the pump, bring in some hot water into the hydronic coil to speed up the defrost uh, cycle um, uh, and to deliver some warm air while the heat pump is in defrost mode. Uh, to do that we need to know what the temperature on the line set is so we attach the DH evaporator temperature sensor to the suction line downstream of the of the evaporator coil um, and Parameter number 11 gives us what that temperature is. So again, in this case, because it's all indoors, we see that the temperature is representative and the same temperatures as the other sensors in this case. If you did not have a heat pump and did not have an evaporator temperature sensor, the value at 11 would be 999. It would just come up 999 indicating that it's not installed. Okay, parameter number 12 is the humidity value. So this is, we have a humidity sensor that is standard on all of the Wi-Fi and zoning models. It does not come with the base model. You can order it as an accessory, as an optional accessory, and install it with the base model, but it does not come with the base model, but it does come with all the other models. And what it will do is uh, measure the humidity uh, of, the, of the return air. And if the value that it reads is below the set point, then it will send 24 volts out on the humidifier contact to your humidifier to bring your humidifier on. So on a heating call, it'll bring on your humidifier if the red value is below the set value. And we set this in, uh, in the general parameters. So the info mode again is just reading the values you're not able to set anything or adjust anything in info, info mode. You're just reading the feedback. Okay, parameter 13. Now, 13 through uh, through many of the other, we go up to 40 different parameters that we, we have in information mode. Um, but on, on parameter 13, we're looking at the state of the flow switch. So is there flow? Uh, if it says on, there is flow. If it's off, there is no flow. So right now there is no flow being uh, read through the unit and that's that. So it's just for domestic priority purposes. 14. Parameter 14 gives us the pump relay state. So we do have a 24 volt pump connection uh, on the unit. Um, this is different from the main pump, the variable speed controller that we looked at earlier. Um, the variable speed control is controlling the pump that is supplying water to the iFlow. This 24 volt output uh, marked circulator as well would be if you're needing to bring on a primary loop pump for example where we just send the 24 volt you would then need a relay to uh, 120 to bring on the, the main, the, let's say the primary loop pump and then we would control the secondary loop pump, the variable speed pump that's bringing the water into the iFlow directly from the C1 and N connection on the uh, on the unit. All to say, uh, 14 is the pump relay state. Are we supplying power 24 volts to that uh, uh, circulator contact or not? Um, parameter number 15 is the boiler TT state. So are we calling the boiler on at the TT connection here on the unit? So this is our output. Um, are we sending the, the call for the boiler or not through that uh, dry contact? <coughs> Parameter number 16, same type of thing. Are we supplying a call for cooling 
at the AC uh, Y1 relay. Um, so we have outputs for the compressor, for the AC compressor. Um, are we sending 24 volts there or not? And you'd be able to see if we are or not. Right now it's off. If it was on, you would actually be able to see the LED light on the other side of that relay. It would be illuminated, indicating or showing us that in fact it is being called on. So by the controller and by the LED lights on the board, you can confirm that uh, uh, that the system is operating. 17 is the same thing, except this is the Y2 relay now. And again, you would see that Y2 relay being illuminated, the LED light being illuminated as well, if it was on. Some 18 and 19 are the heat pump outputs. So this is our, our O and B for the reversing valves. Uh, when we're supplying, uh, when we've got a heat pump connected to the system. Uh, 20 is the uh, de dehumidifier uh, contact. So again, whether we're supplying 24 volts to that. Um, 21. 21 is the humidifier relay state. So again, are we supplying 24 volts out to the humidifier on a call for heating if the humidity value is below uh, the desired set point? Um, 22 is for a future, uh, future, um, a future component, a water adjustment valve, so we can actually control the flow into the into the iFlow, delivering perfect BTUs. Um, that is not uh, functioning yet, but coming soon. 23. Uh, 23 will tell us whether or not we're communicating with the Navian. Um, so we have communication capability with the Navian tankless water heaters. Um, when you when you are using the iFlow with a Navian, you will go to parameter 28 on the Navian, not on the iFlow, but to parameter 28 on the Navian, turn communication on, and when that happens, uh, we will have communication between the iFlow and the Navian. The connector for the uh, communication cable between the iFlow and the Navian is this one. There are two RS-485 connections on here. Uh, one at the top, one below the display. The one that we use for communicating with the Navian is the one below the display. So you would turn the power off, plug in here, plug into your Navian, turn both of them back on, and they would start communicating. Parameter 23 tells us, in fact, if we are communicating or not. If we are, then it would be on. If we are not, it would be off. Parameter 24 just allows us to set the date and time uh, of the uh, of the unit. <clears throat> oh, sorry, uh, the 24. This allows us to set the uh, uh, the clock, um, the 24 hour clock on this. 25. Um, we're looking at on 25 right through 40. We are looking at the conditions of the zoning system. So this is a two zone system. Um, can see if I just bring this down we have two zones worth of dampers connected and then we have two thermostats connected so those are two zone thermostats our zone relays so we can actually go in and test uh, and see what the uh, condition of the dampers are. are are we bringing on the dampers are the relays calling or not and we do that through the controller so um, the zone one supply damper is it open or closed and it's going to give us a percentage so right now it's fully opened uh, reading a hundred percent so our default on the zoning system uh, is hundred percent open we want as soon as there's a call for cooling we want the blower to start up and deliver in so our dampers are open uh, in the default not closed um, when another zone calls, so let's say we have two zone system, uh, both of them will be open in default. Let's say zone only zone one calls for cooling. So what would happen is we would close the damper in zone two to prevent air going through zone two when it's not calling, and but we would keep the power going to uh, zone one. So um, this will give us an idea of what the position of the zone damper is. And then we have a temperature sensor in each of the uh, in each of the zones as well, um, so it gives us our supply air temperature. So 
anyway, we can go through that for each of the zones we have. So zone 1, zone 2, zone 3, zone 4, and it's all the same. So you can follow through in your manual as you set those up. So that is the information uh, included in the in mode 1. So again, we just if we want to get out. So again, zone 1 information. Again, you can't set anything in mode 1. It is just uh, feedback. It's just showing you what the state is. To adjust, then we go into uh, mode 3, 4, and 5 to actually adjust the parameters. So that is mode 1. Thank you.